Hello lovely people and welcome back to this week's new video. Uh, this is my romance-a-thon vlog. As you can tell, I am participating in my third readathon in quarantine. I just started my first read. Romance-a-thon is hosted by Jacqueline from Weeby Bookin and Gabby from Gabby Reads. This is my first time participating. I'm really excited to just jump right into only romance books. There are six prompts for this. Well, one is the buddy read, so five prompts technically. So the buddy read I'll just start out is If I Never Met You by Mary McFarlane. I do end up mispronouncing her name quite a few times in this vlog until I figure out how to say it and hopefully that's ready for me on audio because it says give or take two weeks so that's not really great the book that i'm currently reading right now is get a life chloe brown i literally just started this by talia hibbert like i'm on page three this is for the prompt read a romance with five or more words in the title i'm really excited because people raved about this the first prompt is um read a book published in 2020 and for that i am picking my march book this is the two lives of lydia bird by josie silver she is the author of one day in december which i absolutely loved five stars cried my eyes out so this was one of my anticipated reads the second prompt is read a book with an illustrated cover and that is the boyfriend project by farah roshan the next one is read a romance with your favorite trope and this i'm listening to an audiobook and this is love in other words by christina lauren i don't remember which trope i picked the fourth prompt is read a new to me author which is things you save in a fire by Catherine center those are the books that i have i'm very very excited this already sounds really cute it's already like super british and i love it you deserve each other by sarah hogel just became available on, on libby so that's also a backup option and i love her yesterday i did read get a life chloe brown by talia hibbert i read perfectly a hundred pages i don't even see that but i didn't tell you what this book is about so chloe is in chronic pain she's chronically ill she has fibromyalgia which has prevented her from you know living her life you know like yolo type of life she witnesses almost fatal accident and realizes that her eulogy would just be so boring and decides to create a list to get a life in doing that she recruits red who is like the superintendent of her building to help her do exactly that i said in my haul video that that premise reminds me of the kiss quotient so far it is cute and it's like making me smile a lot and get all the feels but red to me doesn't seem good looking i don't know if it's because there's like literally no face and he has long hair i don't the long hair looks not for me man buns weren't for me i mean exceptions for like jason momoa and harry styles but um with harry i prefer it to not be the longest that it has been so he doesn't seem like hot to me but it's still like fun watching their banter because she's kind of like a rich bitch like a literal rich bitch red seems really really nice like his personality is there for me I finished Get a Life Chloe Brown and also my new dress cam. I'm trying it out. I could wear this to a Zoom wedding that's happening on Friday, but I love it. It's perfect. I'll link it. It's from Faithful the Brand and it's the cutest thing ever. Hello, five stars. I'm immediately going to purchase Take a Hint Danny Brown, which is the second book, Chloe's sister Danny. Holy crap. I really, really loved this. Although for the whole time, I didn't think that Red was good looking at all in my mind. His personality definitely makes up for that. And I definitely believe in like falling for someone because you've gotten to know them, not solely on looks. There's representation for fibromyalgia. There's talk about mental health here and attending therapy. And what I really liked about this is that the conflict wasn't something ridiculous because there's a warning in the beginning of this of abusive relationships which red has gone through and you can tell because of the conflict how much damage has been inflicted on him and how much he's working through that and how much he wants to work through that promising for this breathe oh my god and i love her
Last night before I went to bed, since I had finished a book, I wanted to start a new one right away. So I started Two Lives of Lydia Bird. This was an anticipated book for me. A little bit high expectations because I loved One Day in December so much. I'm only like 60 pages into it. Lydia is with Freddie and they're engaged and they're like meant to be they're so in love and on the day of her birthday dinner freddie is in a fatal car accident she is obviously very sad she's grieving she can't even get to work she takes medication to get to sleep and she dreams about him i'm not sure how this is going to work but there is a doorway where she can live with freddie and i think that's the dream world um it's being heard the chapters are being separated between asleep and awake and when she's asleep she gets to dream about freddie and never was an accident and they're still together her sister l and jonah is freddie's best friend they want her to get back out there and live a happy life without freddie because that's what he would have wanted for her in doing so i think she meets someone she's trying to figure out if she can move on with this new person or choose to be with freddie you can understand her pain and how she feels when she like really just wants to get to sleep to be with Freddie again and that's all I can say about it so far but I am enjoying it and I love her Last night before I went to bed, I finished The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. I think I want to give it five stars, but I'm having trouble deciding between a 4.5 and a 5 because I loved it in a very different way than I did One Day in December. One Day in December, 100% I could say that it is a romance, but I would say The Two Lives of Lydia Bird was more contemporary with a little bit of romance thrown in there, like the tiniest bit. So don't read this going in expecting a romance. Romance. And in Josie Silver fashion, it takes place over a long period of time, so over a year, which I liked. I saw Chelsea Dolling's review, she gave this three stars because she felt it was too long, but I liked it, especially as someone who understands grief of someone who's very close to you. I liked seeing the process of her dealing with that grief and coming to terms with loss and coming to terms with the fact that you shouldn't have to feel guilty for being happy after this person in your life has disappeared. I really really enjoyed it. I mean, I don't think it was a good fit for Romance-a-thon, but it might just be five stars for me. I wanted to start a new book and start an audiobook instead and I had Christina Lauren's Love and Other Words for reading your favorite romance trope and I realized that I completely misunderstood the premise of this book because it was a Christina Lauren and I do want to get to it but the trope here is second chance romance and that's not what I'm looking for but then I also have available from the library You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel. They are fiancés, right? They're engaged but then they don't like each other if they call off the wedding, they have to pay all the security deposit and stuff for the wedding. They're not getting their money back. So whoever ends the wedding first has to foot the bill. And so they are trying to get each other to call it quit. So I might do this. I am 52% of the way through with You Deserve Each Other and I'm really enjoying it. It's funny and just listening to Naomi and Nick bicker at each other and just like yell at each other for even dumb things like they were having a fight and then at the end they're getting back into the car and Naomi's yelling and she's like I want fucking pizza today and I love her Last night, I was able to finish my book, You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogle. And I think I'm going to give it four stars. It definitely wasn't reaching that five star point because I didn't feel like I really connected with the characters, but I really did enjoy them falling back in love and bickering. Also, I think them fighting was really funny. Today is a Zoom wedding, so I'm already dressed in my dress because I'm really excited. This is a Cezanne dress that is like very very forgiving because that's like so much product left over but i kind of love how flowy and like bohemian it is so it's friday and it, i read three books so far i don't know what i'm gonna read next maybe i'll read the boyfriend project i'm really excited about it this is about what's her name samia the live tweet reveals that she has been catfished by a three-timing jerk she meets the other two girlfriends and they become really good best friends they all create a pact for themselves to work on themselves no men for six months but of course during that time she meets this guy who just seems a little bit too good to be true his name is daniel and they work together. This is for read a book with an illustrated cover. Also the group book, If I Never Met You, I think it's called, is available so I can get to that today if I wanted to. 
but I am about to start chapter 12 so I'm about 125 pages into this and it's interesting um I really like it Samira is like such a boss bitch and really is someone who takes charge for herself and like is doing everything for herself and it's only that she's like looking into dating and finding like the perfect guy because society tells her that she needs a man otherwise her life won't be complete because her job is great she's doing really well there and she's only been there for a short period of time she has her dream car she bought a new apartment like she's doing really well and then daniel on the other hand there's representation here because not only is he african-american but he's also part korean as well but we're learning about or hope we have learned a little bit about daniel's background because he's just been hired at her job he is not what i expected there's a lot more to his background than i thought and i love her last night i did finish the boyfriend project actually i finished the entirety of it and i'm giving it four stars i really highly recommend this one this one is really cute first of all as jasmine guillory says the strong female relationship was really great it was nice seeing that these women came out of being like tricked by a man and realizing that this was the man's fault and they created a really great friendship and bond out of this instead of we get getting like really catty and like blaming other women they decided you know what fuck this guy we are not gonna be duped like no and they became friends which i really really enjoyed and that happened really quickly on in the book the side plot line regarding him was really interesting i mean it was sort of like a mystery it didn't end or wasn't like fleshed out in a way that was like super interesting but i also like wasn't disappointed because i was here for the romance and not for like that mystery aspect oh regarding privilege they also talked about this so there is a co-worker who's like a total bitch who steals um credit from people she takes people's work and presents it as her own so the two of them as people of color as black people they were talking about privilege and how Samia as a woman also a black woman she has to work extra hard to get half as far and they talked about that privilege really openly and how frustrating it is for her but she is like so killer at her job she is boss ass bitch and she's amazing at her job but it, she didn't get there easily you know it shows that like the hard work and the real life aspect behind it of like i have to work extra extra hard to get to where i am today so i really really like this so a book with an illustrated cover check i am gonna start the buddy read book today this is a fake dating romance trope which sounds really cute Lori's partner was oh my god she's was with her partner for over a decade when he breaks up with her i guess and they work at the same law firm so it's really really awkward i mean they were together for a decade you know over a decade that is a really long time and then she finds out in the office that her ex has gotten someone pregnant and that's like the office gossip that's like so humiliating in comes jamie who is apparently the office playboy and he wants to impress the boss by dating someone who is like respectable and someone that can impress his boss they start fake dating and everything goes from there which sounds really cute the last prompt that i have to complete besides the buddy read is new to me author and that is things you save in a fire by Catherine center so i think i'm also going to start this today well fuck me because i just started the audiobook for if i never met you and she's scottish it's vary i'm still listening to if i never met you by very mcfarland and vary god fuck okay it's not mary okay and i'm 37 percent of the way through and it's okay so far i mean the fake romance has been suggested so far i'm not sure like how quickly it's gonna be moving along i'm not super in love with anyone she and her partner dan were together for 18 years they were trying to have kids she's also in such a sit shitty situation because her ex said he didn't want to have kids and then as soon as they broke up he like jumped into bed with another woman and she immediately got pregnant and he said he didn't want kids and I love her AC's going and the laundry so hopefully it's not too loud but last night before I went to bed I finished If I Never Met You by Vari McFarlane and I gave it two stars I just found it hard to get into and hard to connect to the characters i feel like the, the most i was interested was when her and dan were breaking up it kind of lost me when her and jamie were coming up with the idea to have a fake romance maybe also the fact that it was an audiobook it makes it easier for me to dissociate myself if i'm not interested in it because it's not physically in front of me and so the side characters i just were like who in terms of the romance between them if this book isn't smutty at all not that that's like a bad thing or anything but because there wasn't any of that there weren't a lot of moments of them like kissing i just didn't see any chemistry between them it's the last day so my last book obviously is still going to be things you save in a fire by Catherine center which i'm hoping i can bang out in today
I'm on page 156 of things you save in a fire and it started out a little strong like intense there is a really gross prank of like borderline harassment and there's some groping that happens like not it's just not great cassie's the main character she lives in austin this book i didn't even tell you what's about so she actually is a firefighter in austin and she is one of the very few female firefighters in texas and her firehouse there is very progressive and very modern they like it's not a big deal that she's a woman she's very good at her job and she was um set to become a lieutenant there's an emergency and she goes to live with her mom in massachusetts a small town called lillian and they are not as progressive they're honestly kind of backwards they've never had a female firefighter they're a little bit misogynistic about it there's like a whole brotherhood in the firehouse so you know there's pranking there's a lot of hazing that goes on and she knows that she has to take that in stride for them to accept her this is a romance so she's the new girl she's the newbie at the firehouse and there's also a rookie named callahan and it's cute so far i mean i'm 156 pages through it and i read that in one sitting i've never read like a firehouse setting before i mean i watched chicago fire but you know this is very different i finished her Ooh, it's a 2.5 star yeah it was doing okay and it was at like a three star the whole book and then i guess the climax happened and i wasn't feeling it and the epilogue just made it worse but i did like it better than the buddy read so i was like okay i can't give it a 2.2 star so i'm not here with a 2.5 the romance again with the chemistry i just didn't really see it i could tell that there was an attraction there an infatuation with each other but i just didn't see how they like fell in love the ending was just so quick and it just like accelerated i was like where is this coming from this is happening too fast what the fuck with this being done i'm technically finished with romance thought. this readathon started on monday and i began with get a life chloe brown i gave this five stars this is a new favorite read i like e almost immediately purchased take a hand danny brown and i'm waiting for that amount and then i read the two lives of lydia bird by josie silver and i also gave this five stars this is a prompt for read a romance book with five or more words in the title and then this one was for read a book published in 2020 my next book was you deserve each other by sarah hogel which was four stars that was for read a romance with your favorite trope which was hate to love that's not my favorite trope but i don't have like a number one favorite but that is a trope that i have found to enjoy because i like the hating game the boy from project by farah roshan which i also gave four stars and this was for read a book with an illustrated cover i read the buddy read next which was if i never met you by vari mcfarlane and i gave that two stars the last book was things you save in a fire by Catherine center and this was 2.5 stars for the prompt of read a new to me author sadly she i don't know if i will pick other stuff up by her i'm not like super excited but i see a book by her i'm not gonna be like definitely not gonna pick that up that actually gives me a whopping total of 2186 pages read for this readathon which is so good i really really enjoyed my time with this readathon my very first time participating in romance-a-thon also i'm so glad that i was able to read so many cute cute romances and get like really high ratings for some of them also today is sunday the last day right it's also day 100 of my quarantine like being in isolation i posted an instagram photo of it anyway yeah i hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you read for romance -a if you read any of the same books that i did oh and let me know your thoughts on if i never met you let me know what you read what you enjoyed, what you didn't like, and give this video a big thumbs up, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.